Hi, Scissorin here with another video, and uh, we are doing a Gauntlet Race Tips and Tricks video. So, uh, Gauntlet is an upcoming race that we're organizing, and it is very, very rippy. Uh, if you see here on the right, we have, uh, and this is active in every single zone, including like things like wild side areas, maps, bosses, Uber Elder, Awakener, everything. Uh, and I want to make like a quick tutorial because even things like Hillock is very rippy in this race. And what will happen a lot is that uh, new players will want to try and see all the cool prizes that you can win even for just like participating in the league. Um, will want to try but maybe give up very early because you know they might get one shot by Hillock. Uh, and Hillock does actually one shot in this. Uh, or at least always two shot. And as you can see what I'm doing right now is I'm running around him in a circle. Um, so particularly difficult to do on a melee character. So like anything like Ranger or Witch would be fine, but uh, Templar, etc. You have to do stuff like this. You want to make sure you're going around him counterclockwise. We can try taking one hit now. And you can see that he almost one-shots me and definitely will two-shot. Um, another thing that's very, very big for this, except just going counterclockwise, is to uh, make sure you have the always attack without moving toggled. That is very, very important for this. This is going to be a like, longer video covering all the tips and tricks. And I'm going to cover pretty much every zone or at least most of the ones that I feel are, are important. Um, and tell you like what's what's important to look out for. Right off the gates. Checking through everything here and seeing if you get like a wand with, you know, even decent like, like a three length like blue, blue, green. Or um, getting like plus one lightning, plus one physical, plus one chaos. Like that's very easy to vendor. Technically you could even like repeatedly make more... Um, characters just to check the vendor for a plus one uh, of the spell they're going to level with. So right now I don't even need to buy anything because I, I think it's very important to explain the coast. Here's another place where people give up. A lot of people will try to like very carefully kill things here. Whereas that guy, like the cannibal, he will just one shot you. So if you're trying to like clear um, and be very very safe, it's a very very big um, risk that you're going to get a one shot. Just run through this and you can see that like, yeah, you'll take some damage, but the cannibals can't really hit you. Whereas if you're clearing uh, and attacking them back, you'll notice very quickly that you're not going to be able to like move out of it. Uh, and they 100% will one shot you. The cannibals do an insane amount of damage. And that is because of the most dangerous um, mod, which is monsters fire two additional projectiles. The number one thing in this race that is like, I cannot stress this enough. But go slowly and over level. So uh, I'll log on my higher character so we can hover over each zone. As I said, coast, super rip. You don't want to clear things here. Now, obviously, you have to in mud flats, and you still have to be careful of the rows there. They're fairly dangerous. Submerged passage, fairly easy. Um, and then in the ledge, you um, you start getting more dangerous monsters. Uh, the like goats that jump at you. Climb, loads of goats that jump at you, and they're very rippy. Plus, you have the unique skeleton archer will two shot you. Um, and the goat, um, the goat that's there, you want to like just sprint through it, just run through it, um, because that will one shot you. Prison doesn't really have any dangerous monsters, like some of the archers are okay. Um, and then Prisoner's Gate, both Prisoner's Gate and Ledge are good over leveling zones. One of the things I can't stress enough is treat this more like a roguelike. Treat it more like a different game than the PoE that you're used to. Not only is it hardcore, but it is think, like similar to like Dark Souls no hit talents or something like that. Like it's so dangerous. Um, and the reason that it's so dangerous during the start is because of all those mods, especially the 90% um, 90 extra elemental damage combined with the minus 40 res. And that's why in this guide, I'm going to be recommending that you actually get resist kept as early as like Act 2, Act 3. Um, and I'm going to teach you how to do that and what to look out for too. Yeah, but uh, like Ledge, if you want to overlevel before Brutus, and Prisoner's Gate, if you want to overlevel before Merveil, which you should. Uh, and there's nothing wrong in being as much as 5 or 10 levels over the zone you're in. Uh, obviously, this is going to be slow, but for most people, once you get to maps, maps aren't that hard in this, because these mods, like, they're not that much different than, like, a fairly rippy map. So if you're rolling them blue with no damage mods, it's just like you're doing rippy maps all the time. Uh, so once you do get 75% res, then uh, that helps a lot. Um, and then especially for Brutus as well, and regardless of what build you are playing, and I'll talk a little bit about builds and what I recommend as well as, well as like gems to use, 
But regardless of what build you're playing, you can very easily um, make a new ranger character. That's Hillix easy. Uh, then all you have to do is do the Mudflats quest, and then you can buy a decoy totem. If you're, say you're playing a shadow or a witch or something that can't normally buy decoy totem, then that helps a lot for, for both like Merveil and for Brutus. Because you might feel like you have a very low damage uptime window, and, and that's going to help you. In the last gauntlet, we had Harvest. It was very easy to gear. It was also very like easy uh, and not a dangerous mechanic. Now we have Heist, which is very dangerous. But um, there is actually a nice little trick you can use early. And you can get an infinite heist level 2 trick. Uh, and I want to teach you guys how to do that. So you go into Rogue Harbor. I think Korea gives you your first job. Um, and this is a level 2 mission. Now, if you do this mission, but you don't complete it. So you don't click the... Whatever the quest reward at the end is. If you don't complete it, you just go in. Open the... You know, if it's a jewelry box, a currency box, whatever... And all the other boxes, and then you leave, and then you go, you go back to Karai, and you're like, "Hey, um, I couldn't do the mission, Karai." You go back in, you do it again. You're like, "Karai, I'm really bad at this. Can I have another one?" She's gonna give you infinite high level twos. Obviously, you don't get a shit ton of stuff, but you you get a bunch of rares. You have a decent chance of getting like ones that are rare and can be like plus one physical gems, plus one lightning gems, whatever you need, right? Like I said, and this is where it comes in with think of this version of PoE more like a roguelike, more like a different game, and think that you really have to take your time through the act. So if you're a new player, especially if you're a software player, you haven't really played hardcore at all, Gauntlet is insanely hard, uh, especially when you don't really know what to do. Brute force it. Just spend something like three, maybe four hours in Act 1, really like making sure you're like getting a decent amount of like currency, like transmutes and stuff, because as soon as you hit level 8, you can already use your crafting bench. Like, I would recommend having 75 cold resist for Merveil, which is obviously a struggle. You're losing minus 40 already. But you want to have 75% cold resist for Merveil, as well as some fire for the exploding things. So the important thing to notice here is that we have these. Um, which you can use... The, oh, I thought it was level 8. But yeah, as soon as you're level 12, you can, you can craft these. You have, like, vendor recipes that are pretty important. There's a caster and there's a uh, melee vendor recipe. So here we have, like, three different rings. And if you see, we have a blue wand. This is important. We have a blue wand. And then if I use this, I'm going to get a level 20 wand. So this is a rare ring, blue wand, and uh, alteration. If I use a white ring, it will be a level 8 required. And if I use a blue ring, it will be a level 14 required. So normally what I do is I'll do like the, the first two ones. I'll craft like this. Uh, whoops. The first two ones, I'll craft like this. And then I'll keep those until I like remake them with level uh, with, with like level 20 ones and that are rare. Now, for the suffix here, some players might do the terrible mistake of doing this. This is a terrible mistake because now I just got accuracy. Whereas what you do want um, is you want to use that open suffix on your one to craft resist, right? Um, because that, that is such a struggle for us. You have a similar recipe for physical skills where you use a uh, any weapon a rustic sash can be um, blue or rare can't be white and then a uh, a, a uh, blacksmith whetstone so that that's super important to to craft resist here because uh, getting 40 percent resist from your weapons helps so much something that's very important to talk about is movement abilities and especially smoke mine and it's basically the setup I'm using on this character here, which is Smoke Mine and Flame Dash. I have Flame Dash on my second bar here, which also should have always attack without moving. I um, don't know why all of those are turned off. That's weird. But uh, yeah, so I would be normally playing like this. Uh, the reason why Smoke Mine is so good, especially for bosses, is because let's say that Cassie is a boss that we want to kill Cassia. If you Smoke Mine on top, she's now blinded. So she has a 50% less chance to hit. Uh, and this is huge, especially for bosses like Dominus or something like that. Another tip that is very important as well, and this is um, like a very, very nice generic tip, is that you can have instant abilities on mouse button 1 for a little extra defense. So here I have a steel skin, and that means that periodically while moving, I'm just going to be casting um, steel skin, right? It, it still costs me the mana and stuff, but I don't have to worry about timing it. It's just like... Now and again, maybe Steel Skin is going to save me. It only works with any instant ability. 
And let, let's talk a little bit about like both Brutus and Merveil. Generally, you want to make sure you have your decoy totem up and you don't want to like stand in one place for too long. As long as you have like a large amount of movement, especially circular movement, is very important in Path of Exile. Like circling around the boss makes it very hard for them to target you. And, and this is where overleveling comes in so handy as well, because especially if you're leveling with like, let's say, Orb of Storms, Toxic Arrow, Caustic Rain, uh, obviously not with any melee ability, but with any ability like a spell, overleveling is going to give you so much damage. Um, so if you have, let's say you have like maybe like a level 5 uh, Orb of Storm, because you've overleveled uh, instead of level 3, and you have plus 2 Lightning, then you have a level 7 instead of maybe level 3. So it's, it's such a big damage boost. That you get and that's why overleveling is like the number one thing i'd recommend so moving on to act two i'd say most of the monsters here like the monsters themselves are very easy there's not really much that i would like be particularly concerned about maybe like the spark mages in chamber of sin so make sure you have some lightning resist uh, but most of the monsters themselves are fairly easy um you want to help alira here on pretty much every single character because you want the resist right the resists are super important another tip as well some people aren't going to like this. But obviously early on in the gauntlet, you're not going to have freeze immunity. So you kind of want to have logout macro to deal with that. Because, you know, you're probably not going to have like 40 alterations to roll it. And especially before Act 2, you're not going to have beasts to craft it. But do do remember that you can beast craft flasks, maybe on a Quicksilver, to get freeze immunity early on. But I would recommend getting a logout macro so that if you get frozen, you don't just instantly die. Um, but that's up to you. Weaver as well is insanely rippy. I'll see if we can get scryed edit in some clips of me killing Weaver. But I basically will smoke mine on top of the Weaver. Again, like move move around them in a circle. Weaver is very scary if you're if you're far away from Weaver. Uh, because she does like a she like lobs like a net, like a ball net on you, and that has AoE overlap. It'll one-shot you. Even I think it does like 1,003 or 1,400 damage. Uh, and it, it's insane. Another big tip for Weaver as well, um, and this works especially on your first playthrough, but whenever you haven't talked to or done the Einar Menagerie, he will appear at the start of the zone, and you can talk to like that guy and he will follow you. That is really good for the Weaver's Chamber, because Einar will help you with damage there. Now, if you've already done some bestiary quest or talked to Einar in town, then he won't appear at the start, and you'll have to find a beast for him to like follow you. The main reason for overleveling for Weaver is just to kill her very quickly. Ventrua has a nice clip as well um, of him one-shotting Weaver with Earth Shatter. This is like not insane gear. He only has 600 life. One, two, three, and then boom. She doesn't even phase. So, so that is a decent way to deal with it with just killing her very quickly. Um... And another thing for the gauntlet, don't be too discouraged if you die early because it might take you three or four characters to make like a character get to max. Um, let's move on to Act 3. Pretty much every monster here is pretty easy. There are some exceptions. You have Lunaris Temple, Library, and Scepter of God as dangerous monsters. Here is where resists really start mattering, like even normally, but obviously exceptionally so because of this. You get at least, at the very least, 50% all resist. Lunaris Temple has the uh, titty witches that are going to like machine gun you down. They're insanely dangerous. So when you're like dealing with these, make sure that you move after they target you. Uh, either by blinking through them uh, and then attacking, but don't like attack them while they're attacking you. I'll show you what I mean. There. You can see like they'll like start attacking much faster than normal here. And you want to like just blink through them. I mean, right now I'm killing them with my blink, which is unfortunate. Uh, but they're very, they like, it's not like they're moving while targeting. So as long as you are moving, you're not going to get hit at all. It's more about like, if you like, start like this and then start attacking them, you're, you're going to get like, blasted down easily. Gravitius, Piety, and Dominus are all fairly dangerous. Gravitius, uh, will like, lob his like, fire thing at you and that has AoE overlap and also the rain from the sky does so much damage. Uh, I, I would recommend kiting Gravitius because the fire rain um, stays in one area. Like, it's just like a firestorm rain and it'll stay in this area. So if you go over here, the firestorm rain isn't following Gravitius. Piety, pretty much like normal. Like obviously the ice stage, just hide behind a pillar. Um, and on the fire stage, I would just smoke mine on top of her. Dominus, the lightning tendrils that he does, like obviously he gets 
five. He normally has three. Um, and it's like, it can very, very quickly kill you if you don't have a lot of lightning res. And all his helpers as well. Like, the entire Dominus fight is uh, is fairly dangerous. And a lot of people might struggle with it. The second stage, I find it very easy just because of smoke mine. Make sure you portal. So you can, like, portal out when your flasks get low. And then just make sure you have a permanent smoke mine on his feet. And the blood stage doesn't do that much. But uh, still a dangerous fight in general. Let's move on to Act 4. And you definitely want to be resist capped for here. Most monsters here are pretty easy until you start getting to, like, Comb and Doresso and the Belly of the Beast. Then they start being scary, especially for Belly of the Beast, you want to consider having bleed immunity on your flask. Comb, I'd say Comb is harder than Doresso because Doresso has the stages, and since you're doing overleveling, you should have so much damage that you're basically bursting him down to each stage. Um, comb, like the things coming from the walls in the Comb Arena, will um, shoot multiple projectiles, so they can be very, very dangerous. I would overlevel in the Comb Stronghold area. I personally normally do to 38 to 43, uh, and then I ascend. But, um, and you can do that before killing Doreso and Comb. I usually do it after. Belly of the Beast, the piety there as well. You want to stay like fairly close to her when she's doing her rotating spin beam. Um, and, and be scared of that. And the, the balls that she loves out, there's going to be three of them. So you got to be careful for that as well. Um, piety, very, very scary. And again, bleed immunity. Now, Harvest, this is going to be one of the biggest killers in the gauntlet. Um, Dodri is one of the most dangerous things in the entire game. Uh, the balls that she loves normally can one-shot you anyway. Here, they 100% one-shot you. Uh, keep a decoy totem up under, for the love of fuck, don't curse her. If you curse her and get hit, she gets 30% more damage per ball. So, you're dead. Um, you... Probably dead no matter what, so I guess you could curse her and just hope to not get hit. Dodri is like insanely dangerous. Both Chavron and Malagaro aren't too bad, uh, but both Dodri and Malakai himself as well is fairly dangerous. Malakai will do his like the the lob he does for for the balls. There will be five balls and they have AOE overlap, so it's very easy to be killed by those two. Like cannot stress enough how like a healthy amount of movement is well healthy in act five there's not that many like dangerous monsters until i think they start either ruin square or torch court and then what i normally do and i would recommend um even a lot of racers do this but over level the chamber of incense to 45 or 47 and you could actually go all the way to like 52 or 53 here there's so many monsters it's a great place to gear and the number one i have a big pet peeve with this but the number one thing people do a lot is they'll kill katava and be like I'm not rest capped anymore. And they'll like Pikachu face. It's like you lose the same amount of rest every time. It's minus 30. Make sure that you have 105 res before you kill Katava so that you end up on 75. Don't like Pikachu and be like, how much res am I losing? Is it 20 this time? Is it 40? No, it's 30 every time. So make sure you have 105. Another tip I'd like to give, buying a lot of heist contracts, especially things like lock picking and engineering as you level, because the... um. The vendor in the Rogue Harbor resets every time you level, right? Now, buying them as you level. Um, so, like, say you see, like, uh, oh, perception, I need that for prophecy. Engineering, I need that for uniques. Lockpicking, I need that for currency. Buying those and then waiting 10 to 15 levels to do them. And for the love of God, don't roll them. Like, buy for the future. Um, because if you buy one, they're going to be the same level as you are. And if you do them then, you're probably going to die. Both Innocence and Kitava are fairly dangerous bosses. I would say in the Gauntlet that Innocence gets more affected by the mods uh, and is scarier than Kitava. For the Bullet Hell rain that Innocence does, just portal out instantly because uh, there's so many balls everywhere. Um, the, the beam he does doesn't really do anything different, so that's nice at least. Kitava as well, there's nothing that really like gets affected by the two additional projectiles. I find Kitava very easy in this. Comparatively, like it's not really something that gets like an insane buff like Dodri. Now you're in Act 6, and you've probably still gone like, wait, I didn't rest cap. Oh my god. Things to be scared of here in Act 6 is the Dishonored Queen in Mudflats. Then you have like Chavron and Brutus is the other like next up thing. They're not too insane in this. Um, Chavron will have projectiles when she goes in the air, so make sure you're like running pretty far away from her. But they're not like a super insane fight. 
Something I would recommend is to skip Aberath in Prisoner's Gate until you're like 10, 20 levels above. Uh, and same with the Wetlands boss because they are affected by... Um, they're, they're like fairly dangerous in general. Other than that, there's none of like the monsters, the generic monsters that are super dangerous that I would be worried about. Uh, once you get to the Brine King area, this is a lot of dangerous monsters, especially the golems can just like one shot you. So be very, very scared of like the rare golems. Brian King himself as well. Um, pretty scary. W wanna make sure you know about the portal trick. I use it pretty much every time I level the character, but you can, every time the, the waves come in, you can portal out, portal back in. You can put a new portal down uh, while in like your invulnerability window um, and you won't lose your invul. You can skip that entire stage, which is nice. Act 7. Act 7 has a lot of fucked up shit. Obviously, there's a good thing here that in the Broken Bridge, you get to get a Granite Flask. And I would recommend Granite for pretty much everybody. Uh, even if you're going to do a dodge build, a Granite just makes you so safe uh, during the, the early game. And, and it helps so much against the additional projectiles too. Because um, it's obviously that like it reduces each each hit by a flat amount, depending on how much it is. So if, if you have a Granite and you're taking... Uh, 350 damage from a hit, and your granite is up, then you're taking 50 damage. Very, very strong potion for, for early game. In the crypt, super dangerous monsters here, the ethereal knives monsters, like this this entire area, if you're like scared, be scared. It's it's terrifying. You can very, very easily get bursted down here. Uh, Chamber of Sins, uh, inside the Malagara portal is several dangerous monsters. This is also a very, very scared area where you should like progress slowly. And Malagaro fight itself, like, very, very scared of, like, the, the purple, like, arrow shot that he does. They are very, very dangerous. And then the, the spider in there can be fairly rippy as well. And, uh, yeah, it doesn't get easier. Groost. Uh, Groost is very, very dangerous. The arrow rain does get affected by the multiple uh, additional projectiles. And then his, uh, his like, -pa 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 death beam is basically... I would recommend making sure you're so overleveled you can just, like, burst Groost down very quickly. Uh, that is a pro tip here, because it's a, a very, very dangerous fight to be in for a long time. Growth Call? Yeah, the Bearder Growth Call, Mother of Despair, is the mother of ending your run. Definitely make sure you overlevel a lot for Growth Call. There's going to be a lot more of, like, the Shadow Dagger things floating around, and it's very, very easy to die here. So overleveling a lot is nice. Once you get to the Causeway, this is also a very dangerous zone. Um, so we can, you can see, like, even my character here, like, knocking out my ES even, and I have, like, a lot of dodge. Now I actually have to do my deadly rivalry. Um, but, um, as you can see, like, this zone is very, very dangerous. And there is the second thing about this zone is now is where you start getting your first incursions. Uh, this you definitely want to avoid at all costs while leveling, because it is just so insanely dangerous. Um, if you have a golem, then they will, a lot of the time, just like, um, you know, they'll just blast you. Uh, and if you panic, you're, you're dead. Golems in general out of void in this race. And if you're worried about lab as well, something that makes it even safer is if it's two-handed mace, it's generally very, very easy to um, avoid getting hit by him at all. I would care a lot about what lab is, especially for like choosing when to do your uber lab or merc lab later. You might go like, hmm, it's double sword or sword and shield today. Maybe I'll wait until like midnight UK time. Um, and it might be it might be switched. So that's that's worth thinking about. Our Kali as well is actually super dangerous. She um similar to the Weaver has like a, a lob blob attack where she like throws like three blobs at you and then they do AoE overlap. I actually almost died on this character to uh our Kali, so be careful that her lasers and stuff aren't that bad. Act 8 gets Rippy right off the first zone in Toxic Conduits. Well, actually, this is the first zone. But anyway, Toxic Conduits is Rippy. There's a lot of um, poison monsters here. And at this point, like I said, you have minus 70 Chaos Resist. So the poison can degen you very quickly. It's also, like, sometimes hard to see. I can go see now because I'm pretty sure, yeah, I'm minus 74. So we can see how much damage it does even to me and I have 5k life. But then uh, it doesn't get easier because you have... Uh, Okay, it doesn't actually do that much damage to me. But um, generally, this can like this can be pretty rippy. Like the, the poison degens here. And they're hard to see. A lot of people don't really notice it. Dodri as well. Very, very dangerous. Again, 
Deco Totem, huge burst damage, and spam the, like, the Valve. Like, she gets stronger the longer she, like, stays in one uh, form. So she, there's, like, a Valve in the Dodor fight, and you want to click that. Basically, as soon as she comes down, and then you're getting, like, three or four seconds to DPS her. Um, the Slam is going to one-shot you, and her auto attacks will very quickly kill you as well. This is an ending point. This is a huge ending point with Dodori. Another scary thing, like most of the monsters in Act 8 I don't find particularly dangerous, but um, the porcupines on the way to Yugul, very dangerous. I would also skip Yugul until you're like level 68 to 70 uh, and come back for the scale points later then. Solaris, who normally isn't that dangerous, because of the attacking cast speed buff, kind of like removes her cooldown on her uh, fork attack. The one where she'll like look in one area, hold out her beam, and it'll like splinter off. That has no cooldown in this. So it'll just like... Burp, 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 burp. And Lunaris is obviously like pretty much just as rippy as always. Try to stay behind the bosses. Use decoy a lot. Um, and, and really pay attention to your movement here. Now, once you get the sisters down... You are in Act 9, and Blood Aqueduct is actually insanely rippy in this. I do still recommend farming it, especially if you want to get a Tabula. And, and overleveling to like 75, 76 here isn't a bad idea. That's actually how long it took me to get my Tabula. I was 76 before I got it. And because of that, that made that I had like really high level gems. And the rest of the story for me was a breeze. I just one shot everything with my Tabula and level 76. What are the dangerous things in Blood Aqueduct? You have the archers with like uh, GMP. They just like boom can very quickly one-shot you. Granite and keeping a granite up permanently here. Very important. And then you have the Revenants. The Revenants will resurrect monsters. And when you kill them again, they'll like, have red beams, red pillars around them. And uh, yeah, very easy to die too. Well, they'll one-shot you. I would also recommend as soon as you get to Blood Aqueduct, start buying up a lot of the heists. You're getting some lower level ones. Max high level you can buy anyway. It's going to be, yeah, 67 is the, the max level you can buy. But if you can get even lower ones, that's better because, yeah, you just don't really want to do high level heists. I would um, recommend, especially for players that are worried about survival, spamming low level heists and just really focusing on your character power. Take it super slow. Don't focus on progress. Um, so buying as many as you can low level ones, really, really good here. The rest of the monsters aren't too bad in the rest of Act 9. A little bit once you get to the Belly of the Beast. The Prey of Trinity is insanely hard, but so is the mini-bosses before. Like, the Chevron just spews out projectiles, has a mean slam, and is very fast. Uh, and the Dodery fight here is pretty hard as well. This is where, like, if you've been able to, like, over-level till you have level 19 gems, you've done maybe a lot of heist, very dangerous fight. The, the blobs hurt so much, the slam hurt so much, the lightning hurt so much. Honestly, this is the fight that you really want to make sure. Like, this is why you overlevel, basically. Uh, and you'll see a lot of people can die to this fight even with all that effort and overleveling. So, very, very scary. Um, it's just an insane fight. Now, once you get to Act 10 and you're you're finally, like, reaching, getting close to maps, your, your victory is at hand. Because once you get to maps, honestly, like, reaching, like, level 90 from early maps isn't that hard. The Katava Heralds, like, it's the, the big monsters that will jump at you. And they'll also fire, like, four projectiles out. They're very scary in this. Very, very easily they can one-shot you. Valenta's insane. I think in the last content, I was level 86 or 87 when I did Valenta. Um, and even then, she can still, like, instantly burst you down. I, I cannot describe enough how dangerous Valenta is. Safer for dodge uh, builds with like high like acrobatics, spell blocks, stuff like that. Safer for those, but if she just gets such an insane amount of projectiles, uh, you basically want to make sure that you insta-phase her and don't get hit. Like, she'll kill you. Like, yeah. Getting a Merc Lab, like, I don't feel like Lab is particularly dangerous. And I'd say even, like, the Desecrated Chamber, uh, like, we've seen in the last one, the Rise got one shot there uh, from the boss. And, yeah, it does a lot of damage. Want to make sure you, like, kill him fairly quickly. But it's also very tanky. So it's hard to kill him very quickly. Kitava itself, especially with all the overleveling, I'd say Kitava is very easy. You pretty much insta-phase each phase. And he doesn't really, he doesn't have, he doesn't have a crazy slam. He doesn't have anything that gets affected by um, the additional projectiles. So Kitava itself should be fairly easy. 
Um, it's more about all the other stuff that you'd be worried about here. Obviously, that it's still like a more dangerous fight than normal, getting the attack speed and the 90% extra damage. I do want to talk a little bit about what to do once you made it to maps. You made it to maps. Pog, you're, you're, you're like the finish line is inside, honestly, because this is the hardest part. Uh, obviously, it's hardcore soul cell fun. So uh, getting here is a huge achievement. Uh, and by getting here, you're already uh, in the drawing for, for some really cool rewards. Because that's like the special thing about this gauntlet race is that it's not just about... Uh, like the people like Steel Mage and Darky and, and stuff like that that are going for the rank 1 prizes. But uh, by the time you're in maps, let's let's say that you can you can actually get level 80 pre-maps by doing heists and stuff. So you're in the drawing for all these cool ones, even if you die, uh, but you're in the drawing for all these cool ones. I would recommend being very, very safe and trying to go for level 90. So really, really cool rewards. Um, stay in like tier 5 maps and below for a really long time. Getting like so much mapping done and getting level 20 gems and hoping for a 21 gem early is obviously a good idea. Make sure you're leveling six gems in your offhand um, in, in the actual gauntlet so that, you know, say you're using Blade Blast Blightfall, then you'd be leveling six Blade Blasts here and hoping to get a 21. It's a huge achievement if you can make it to maps, but I do have some like more tips here as well. Don't alk your maps. Ideally, you want to transmute them. You want to roll them blue and roll zero damage modifiers. Now... It's basically like you're running um, rippy maps all the time. You're not running like... It's it's such a like big difference during leveling because they don't normally have mods. Whereas maps, you can already roll fairly dangerous maps. There are some things that you should never roll. For the love of God, never run plus two additional projectiles. Never, ever, for every reason do that. That means that the monsters get four additional projectiles. Um, so anything with AOE overlap is going to insta-kill you. And you want to not run min-max, so like players have uh, minus max resistances. You don't want to do crit, and you don't want to do the generic damage mod, because that's going to buff everything. So just, just don't do damage mods if you want to be safe. Um, I have a video talking about how to farm a 6 sync very easily in Residence, um, and you can farm a 6 sync very, very easily there. Uh, and obviously you're not in a rush, you want to like go really fucking slow and take your time and win that uh, graphics card. Don't do Legion. Legion's going to kill you. And if you're not aiming for winning, there's probably nothing from Legion you need. Just don't open it. Don't click on it. You're probably going to die. It probably will one-shot you. Don't do Incursion. Um, incursion does have some nice benefits, but it's just so insanely dangerous in this. Delirium. I do it. It's worth doing, but also, like, insanely dangerous. And I would do maybe, like, one or two, maybe three rewards and then ditch it. Uh, definitely don't stay in it for very long. Ha! Betrayal. Ha! Log out. Um... Betrayal, unless you one-shot them, there's so many of the Betrayal monsters, like the bosses, that get an insane buff from the multiple projectiles. There's so many of them that are insanely dangerous. Leo's pretty dangerous. Um, they'll, they'll just one-shot you. Uh, if that fled is going to, like, annihilate you, uh, obviously, if that fled doesn't spawn by default. But, honestly, it's not a bad idea to consider leaving the map if Betrayal spawns, if you aren't one-shotting them. In Delve, if you are going for the Delve thing, because obviously there's cool rewards for getting, is 100 or 200? Actually, 100 and 200 Delve has cool rewards. But the, um, the whenever you're doing the Azerite crystals, the, uh, the crystals at the end, like the crystal monsters, they are also very dangerous. Uh, and the, the, the things they do with the spinning, that gets tripled. So it's just three times as much damage as normal. Um, and you, you'll probably see quite a lot of people dying to those. Delve in general is very dangerous. Blight isn't too dangerous. It can kill you, but I wouldn't say that like, it's super dangerous. And for Blight, I would just spam the minion towers with the with the scouts that shoot uh, ranged attacks. They're like very good. Talk a little bit about builds as well. Um, I would recommend Champion Ground Slam and Assassin Blade Blast. They are very, very good for this race. Early on in Assassin Blade Blast, you level with Caustic Hair and Toxic Rain. Champion Ground Slam, you probably do Earth Shatter early. That's like the main ones that everybody's practicing. I think Champion Ground Slam is slightly favored, but Assassin is so good in this because with so many projectiles, being able to dodge them and then have something like I'm about, to, I'm trying to farm a Kintsugi right now. That's why I'm waiting for um, Deadly Rivalry 5, which also drops a lot from Heist. They're very easy to get in these. But yeah, Kintsugi doing Wind Dancer, like it's such a good um, defense in this race. 
Um, so that's the top two builds, but I wanted to make like a quick list of other things that I think are viable or good in the gauntlet. Um, summoners, like summon raging spirits or specter builds. Um, cold dot trickster, it wouldn't do a cultist, but yeah, trickster is very good. Um, blade blast chieftain is decent too. I prefer assassin because you're not really going to like face tank or sustain tank any of the stuff in the gauntlet. A bleed gladiator, like lacerate or something, not a bad idea. Toxic rain. Not a bad idea. And Archmage Cremation is also not a bad idea. That's what Octavian is practicing at the moment. Probably going to be a pretty long video, but I wanted to like give you guys advice on how to approach this. There's so many cool rewards that you have a big chance of winning just by being able to get level 90 in this race. And I think if you just like, hopefully the video helps. If you do a little bit different approach than what you would normally play Path of Exile and treat it like a different game, I, I think uh, a lot of people can do this. So... Play a lot slower than normal, over level like hell, be stubborn, uh, and take your time going through the game. And uh, yeah, good luck. Let me know if it helps. And thanks for watching. Subscribe if you like the video. More importantly, try to die less than I do.